You're probably watching this. If you or your significant other have ever experienced on your boat when the weather report turned on you and your boat turned into a washing machine, or if uh, you've been in a quartering sea uh, or taking a sea to your beam for hours, I spent sleepless nights being anchored and being rolled by an endless swell and just getting waked by, by other vessels, or you have older stabilizers and they don't work at anchor or at zero motion. Uh, which brings us to a bunch of questions. Are stabilizers worth the money and the value? Should I just buy a boat that already has stabilizers? Do I need to rip and replace uh, if my boat has old stabilizers and to put in new ones? And what's better, uh, a gyroscopic stabilizer or traditional fins? Do I even have enough room for stabilizers on my boat? So hopefully we're gonna answer those and more questions about uh, what's available on the market right now for stabilization. Hang on tight, here we go. In 2019, we sold everything to realize our dream of living, working, and cruising full-time on our boat. I'm John, this is Carlin, and this is our home, the Elliott. Stabilization solutions can cost anywhere from $60,000 to hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending upon the tonnage on your boat and the complexity of the install. But let's say we take a 50-foot yacht like the Elliot. Uh, depending upon the solution that we choose, it's going to be anywhere from probably uh, $50,000 to $100,000, and that's not pocket change. And in fact, it should have you considering whether or not you even bought the right boat. If you've sunk $400,000 plus into a boat uh, that you call home, and you look at similar sized new boats that are stabilized, or multi-hull uh, boats that are impossible to find moorage for, all of a sudden, yeah, going into this thing for fifty, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars uh, to have stabilization probably starts penciling out, especially if you're going to be on the boat for another five to ten years. Should you just buy a boat that already has stabilization uh, installed? If it's a new boat, yes. And if that's the case, stop watching the video. I think it's all done for you. But the vast majority of us are interested in the used boat market. I've done some research on, you know, Yacht World, and if you look at it directionally, it indicates that a boat generally can demand another fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars if it's stabilized versus a boat that is unstabilized. That represents, you know, near you know, sixty to seventy-five percent uh, of a return on the investment of putting in stabilization. You actually get it back when you sell the boat. Well, that's not the best return on investment compared to anything else that you spend money on uh, refitting or upgrading your boat. It's a pretty good return. Stabilized boats in the last 10 years, by and large, have about the same technology. So if stabilization is important to you, uh, I'd say s skip the hassle of having downtime on the boat like we're doing right now. We're sitting here on the hard in the yard. It's gonna be at least uh, you know, two to three weeks for the install. We're having to tear the entire boat apart. That means you have the opportunity for other things to be broken or banged up. You know, there's just stress involved with that. So if you have uh, the opportunity to get a, a 10 year old or less boat that already has it installed, I would definitely recommend that uh, versus doing a refit with current technology. Now, traditional uh, stabilization systems, they're hydraulic. So they're mechanically driven. Still the case with the exception of of some newer systems that are electromagnetically controlled and or gyroscopic type systems that we'll talk about as well. The key part of stabilization system uh, that you have with current systems, it reduces the the roll often up to 90%, uh, even while the boat is at anchor. Uh, and it, this is all done because of, well, it has a computer and it has software that drives it. So. If you're looking at boats that are over 10 years old and have stabilization in them, they're going to be handicapped. Uh, they generally aren't being able to do zero speed or anchor uh, stabilization, and it's simple. It's just like if you were going to go buy a computer today, you wouldn't go buy a Commodore 64 or a, you know a Radio Shack Trash 80. It's dated old technology, uh, and so that's really going to be at the, the handicap of that particular stabilization system. There
there is some cool stuff that's going on right now. Uh, DMS of Holland is a good example of a manufacturer that actually has a retrofit kit uh, for the computing side of stabilization. So you can go in and retro an older system that has good hydraulics, good fins, good actuators, and really the only handicap is the computing side of it. And you can do an update on that system uh, so that you can get zero speed stabilization and it's just much more accurate. So if you do have older system, uh, that is something to take a look at, but uh, you know, it's definitely cheaper than putting in a new system, but it isn't going to be free by any means. So the stabilization market right now is, it's pretty crazy what's going on. Uh, there's, there are examples of like um, the Magnus effect uh, offering that's out there right now. It's actually been around for quite some time, but they're really starting to pick up speed as far as going into production. Uh, but it's just starting to break into the market. Also starting to see some all-in-one stabilization solutions that they, they mount to the stern of the boat and they behave like fins um, at lower speeds. And then when you get up to higher speeds, they actually fold back into the back of the boat and they behave like trim tabs to stabilize the boat. All of these things um, are either kind of in, earlier installations on on production yachts or they're still in R&D but I will spend some time talking about the two main offerings that are out there and that is gyroscopic systems and fin systems and the associated pros and cons associated with both of them. So let's start off with the gyroscopic stabilization systems. So Seakeeper was the original gyroscopic stabilization system that was, was introduced and it really still holds the largest market share with the OEM brands. However, due to extreme loads that it places on these, uh, these stringers that it has to bolt to on the boat, um, you don't see a lot of them being retrofitted onto boats or mostly in OEM builds. Um, now we've also seen new entrants into the gyroscopic stabilization market and they've simplified things. Uh, take for instance the Sea Keeper is actually in a vacuum so it can spin faster and not have the drag of, of uh, air within it. Um, and and uh, Quick, as an example, has introduced a system as well uh, that, that doesn't have some of that complexity. Um, is actually a little bit easier to install and has some lower costs associated with it. And while those things are pretty cool uh, for the following reasons, let's go through and talk about it. They can be uh, refit into a boat without having to pull it out of the water. So it drives down costs because it's contained in your boat. You don't have to drill any holes in your boat. Uh, they're self-contained and they don't require any hydraulic pumps or hoses or any of the traditional uh, uh, systems that support the, the fin type of implementations that are hydraulically driven. These are really now also the most competitively priced uh, systems that you can put in. So it'd be about 50,000 to put the quick solution on the Elliott. Yet they really rule when it comes to zero speed stabilization. Uh, fins really can't compete when they talk about the efficiency of being able to flatten out the boat. So let's talk about the downsides. So number one, they draw a lot of power, meaning that you have to run your generator pretty much at all times, although some of them are starting to get the wattage draws down to the area that you know a lithium iron phosphate bank could probably run them for three to five hours. The other one is um, they're not small. So take for instance the quick one that we would install on this boat that would be appropriately sized would be 26 inches by 26 inches by about 26 inches it's just a big cube but these stringers are only 24 inches apart and if you think about it there's not a lot of area to put something like that in this boat and you'd have to be crawling around it the boat just wasn't designed for it so really the biggest problem is just trying to find the space for them they also take time to spin up uh, and draw power when they're doing that so they're not instant on or instant off generally these things are taking 25 to 30 minutes to spin up so that you're really getting uh, the stabilization effect out of them. Uh, and their effectiveness diminishes after you get up to about eight to 10 knots. When I talked to a lot of the, the different reps that, that were selling these solutions. In fact, it was funny because they were saying, well, what you really need is a gyroscopic stabilizer uh, when you're at anchor or out at sea and, and you're below eight knots and you need fins uh, when you're above eight knots and you'd have the perfect solution. Well. I guess that's the perfect solution for somebody that has all the money in the world as well as all the space in the world and we have neither of those. Which brings us 
to fins. Fin stabilization has its own trade-offs. For instance, you have to drill holes through the hull of your boat, definitely a downside. And fins stick out uh, from your hull, which means they can collide with logs or they can get kelp wrapped around them or they can just get damaged. Uh, traditional systems require a hydraulic pump as well as the power supply pump for the, the hydraulic system, as well as a cooling system. So as you can imagine, you have to start putting a lot more equipment within your engine room as well, and it creates space as a premium as an issue. Which brings us to the last one, which is they require maintenance. Obviously, they have a shaft that goes through the holes. So that means that they have seals that have to be uh, every two years or so replace. That means you have to pull the fin off and be able to do that and put them back on. They absolutely rule at speed. So when they're at that eight or 10 knots or faster, they just do a better job than gyroscopic can. That's everything that I've seen in research as well as the feedback from all the manufacturers across the, all, all these different lines. Um, they have instant on and off. So literally you flip a switch and they just start working. There's no spool up that you have to worry about. Uh, that's important. If you have your system turned off um, and all of a sudden you uh, know that you're going to get waked by an oncoming vessel or somebody going by you, it's super nice to be able to just switch them on and then switch them off. Now with the new electric magnetic uh, uh, contactless actuators that are out there. Maintenance, power consumption, space constraints, and zero speed stabilization, that's all taken care of. Um, that is no longer an issue that used to present itself or was exclusionary, I would say, to fins. And that's really the reason that we selected the CMC Marine Stab 20. Uh, it's going to fit nicely in the Elliott. It has, let's we'll start off the, the top, it has a shaftless design. So quite frankly, if it gets ripped off by a log, there's no opportunity for water intrusion into the boat. They do have a couple O-rings that every two years you have to pull the fin off, but it's really just a matter of pulling, well, I think it's 12 uh, nuts you drop the 12 nuts and then you put those new seals back in and, and off you go so you don't have to pull apart your shafts or do any of that type of work it's also super compact uh, the motor is going to be that diameter right there at the top and they only stand up six inches um, in total with the ring that will secure them they're going to be 14 inches in full diameter so that's extremely compact compared to any of the other solutions that are out there so the last piece which is great is power consumption so when you're running the boat so you're at speed it only draws a maximum of 1000 watts and when you're on the hook or at zero speed, which takes more leverage with the fins, it draws up to 2000 watts. The good part is on average, when you're running the boat, it's only 250 watts uh, on average because it doesn't have to consume any power when the fin is not moving. And the same thing is when it's sitting on the hook, uh, we range about 350 watts on average, which is outstanding. That is a really low amperage draw because these are a 240 volt system. That means the amperage is anywhere from zero to 10 amps. What does all of that mean in practice? So basically we can run this system off of our 21 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate bank, you know, making it a full 24 hours before the generator would need to kick on and recharge our, our bank. So those are the key reasons we end up selecting uh, an electric fin system. I look forward to seeing people's feedback and what their thoughts are and what type of systems they've put in as well. Uh, like anything in boating, it's all about trade-offs. Because we have so much power on this boat, with our lithium iron phosphate uh, battery bank and that space was such a constraint for us, this was by and far the best solution for us in the Elliott. We're also seeing a lot of other cool new entrants in this area. So take for instance, uh, Humphrey has a 24 volt electric fin system and it is super sexy. They're carbon fiber fins. They're integrated with their interceptor trim tab solution, which really controls not only the roll, but the pitch of the boat as well. Uh, it's a great solution that's out there. Side Power also has some new fins. They call them vector fins, and they actually create lift and reduce the drag on the boat. So they actually save fuel uh, and can increase the speed of the boat as well. Unfortunately, though, that solution is still dependent on hydraulics, 
Um, so again, there are those trade-offs. Uh, I hope this helps you in your journey of evaluating which stabilization makes the most sense for you or if you're looking to do a new build on a boat or just out shopping for boats that already may or may not have stabilization.